Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and tonight's uh, video is more on sleep. And I've found that with COVID, a lot of anxiety is coming up, a lot of worry, panic, misinformation, indecision. And with that, sleep-wake cycles have been off. But you can't just force sleep, you have to also encourage wakefulness at the opposite end of the day. It's kind of like a seesaw. I really think that you can snow anybody to make them sleepy, but if you do nothing during the day, that's going to offset itself in a bad way. So you really have to embrace wakefulness with a scheduled activity of some sort, scheduled eating, scheduled exercise, scheduled something. And then you have to prepare for the ritual of sleep. If you don't, and you just use medicines or science and chemicals to force sleep, you'll just have a zombie. And that's what we don't want. I'm going to discuss a couple of different cool natural go-tos that I have. For men or women, I think that the first thing I'll talk about is progesterone. This is from Biotics Research, progesterone cream. Progesterone is a natural hormone that all sexes, male, female, and anybody in between, secretes. And progesterone is, in some cases, supposed to be a relaxing or calming hormone. So those of you who have reached uh, climacteric or male menopause, uh, female menopause, perimenopause, when you reach that age 50 or so, sometimes late 40s, you start to have hot flashes, you can't sleep, you're gaining weight, uh, you're anxious. It's usually because your progesterone production is decreasing. And that's usually felt more in women because in women, the hormones that stop are usually very abrupt. And you'll start to have the beginning of, you'll notice, because there's usually going to be a hallmark that this sucked. This year, from that point forward, I had hot flashes, couldn't go to sleep, uh, had issues with mood sensation, uh, problems with vaginal dryness, all the other stuff, weight gain. Men have a more gradual effect, but we still get it. I have hot flashes too if I don't do my usual ritual. Progesterone cream and Biotics Research is a very good company, but progesterone cream, especially if it comes from yams, very good with calming, a supportive effect to the brain, GABA, uh, relaxation, and it has to be done every night. It's not like you take this like Ambien and you go to sleep. You have to use it every night, different body parts. So there's something of receptor fatigue, it's called. And I really think if you're using a topical, whether it's a, a topical that's made over the counter, and Biotics Research, you, it's a good company. You don't have to uh, have a prescription for it. But there's also compounding cream. I, I can't show you the front, but this is from Wakanda. This is for a patient of mine and progesterone cream. And progesterone can be made by a compounding pharmacy, uh, very natural ingredients. Uh, I think compounding pharmacies do better than standard pharmacies. They're not prepackaged, one size fits all, but both of these are progesterone and one is over the counter, the other is exact. Over the counter, you can't control how much. The doctor can exactly put in what he wants the patient to have. 25, 150 milligrams, doesn't matter, but one dose, you put the cream on your fingers or you put it in a syringe and you apply it to a body part. Now, when you apply it, the next night you're supposed to apply it to a different body part. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, if you get confused with that, then just Go like that, apply to one spot, and do that as your ritual every night. If you put clothes on immediately, it might rub off uh, on your robe. So you might waste your cream. Or you might transfer it to another person or another animal, like a dog. So that's not so bad with progesterone. Testosterone and estrogen, that might be a different story. But I'll save that for another day. So either way, if you apply it at night, give it some time and get it regular so your body always has it at the right time every night before you sleep, then the signal will be given to the brain that time to relax. And then the brain will usually recognize that when you apply the cream and it tastes the chemical and the ritual follows, it'll know that it's time for sleep. But you have to enforce the ritual, which includes that before bedtime and your usual brush teeth, rinse your nose, say your prayer, meditate, and all that other stuff. And that's what's really important. You can't be watching TV, by the way. Looking at a screen between the hours of 11 and 4 is not good because it shuts down the brain's melatonin. And I'm going to talk about that now. Melatonin is another compound you can get over the counter. No prescription is necessary. Uh, this is my wife's melatonin, Source Naturals. And this is um, 2.5 milligrams. This is my melatonin, which I hardly use anymore because I'm so ritualized. Uh, this is one squared is equal to 1.5 milligrams. 
Now, the difference between this and this is that you have to swallow this with a glass of water. And it's a higher dose, 2.5. I don't think you have to go over 3 milligrams. I think some breast cancer patients go up to 20 milligrams. I've seen in some studies. And there is uh, some anti-cancer effect at that level for breast cancer. But um, I don't really think you need that much. I, in fact, I think there's a, a down regulation of melatonin if you use it too high too long. And that's why I use it more. I, I, I've fallen out of gracious melatonin because I found another product that's better, I think. But it, I like this better. This is my melatonin. Both of these things are source naturals. But uh, the, th the, the thing I was mentioning is that like I'm in front of these lights. I have a light over there and I have a light over here. And if I'm going to go to sleep, it is now 821. So it's not too bad. But if I stay in front of these lights too long, my brain will interpret it must be lunchtime. So it's going to, with the exposure to these bright lights, it's going to shut down melatonin production from the pineal gland, which is a little tiny gland in the middle of the brain. And when the pineal gland shuts down melatonin, you technically are wide awake. When you're drowsy, sleepy, bored, when it's dark outside, the pineal gland starts to secrete melatonin. Um, so during my consult I had, I saw the sunset and I was thinking, oh, that's nice to see the sunset. It reminded me of just coming off of Colorado because as we were heading off the mountain, you could, we just got back to trailhead off the mountain by the time the sun was setting and that was kind of cool. Uh, but again, for humans, that signals time to sleep, time to end the day. For teenagers, that means time to play, but that's totally wrong. When the sun sets, the darkness comes, the eyes, which are extensions of your brain, when the eyes sense no more light, then it sends a signal to the pineal gland. The pineal gland says darkness, and then melatonin starts to become secreted. So melatonin starts to introduce the brain to slow wave sleep. And it starts to slow things down. Instead of really fast bit waves, beta wave stimulation, problem solving, learning new algorithms, you start to slow down the, the brain waves. And when the brain waves slow down, it becomes peaceful. And that sets you up for sleep. Delta, gamma, really slow waves. And then that eventually, in the first half of the sleep cycle, or first half of the night, that slow wave, that reinforces all the things that you learned in the day. The second half is when you have REM, which is really cool. And that's when you have recovery from workout, you have uh, other things, dream states. So that's why it's really important to have a, the proper handoff of the day to the night. And if the brain isn't uh, gradually corded into sleep and, and dream state, and you just try to abruptly give it, go to sleep now. It won't work that way, and you won't have the refreshing sleep you need to take on the next day. If you don't have refreshing sleep, the adrenal glands don't reproduce the cortisol and DHEA they need to reproduce for the next day. Testosterone, estrogen doesn't really secrete properly for the next day. You will have an offset of cortisol, estrogen. You'll be stressed out. High cortisol steals from estrogen and testosterone. So those of you who are stressed out and you're trying to figure out, why am I losing muscle? Why am I getting fat? Well, it's because you're not making any more hormone. You're producing all cortisol because you're underslept. And those of you who have a higher weight, you know you snore, and when you snore, you can't sleep because the brain isn't rested. And again, it all comes down to brain waves and proper sleep and rhythm. So that seesaw of daytime, nighttime is really important. We're so used to bastardizing sleep because, yeah, we don't need sleep. I'll just uh, make it up during the day. I'll just have a cup of coffee. I don't need to sleep. Well, guess what? Check your weight, check your cholesterol, check your inflammation markers, check your joints, Check your muscle to fat ratio and then tell me how you're doing with your sleep now. The idea is that when you flood your system with melatonin, it might just give the brain a little bit of a nudge to say, oh, slow wave, darkness, let's go back to sleep. If you take a pill, that's cool. You just have to swallow water. And I, my fear is that if you swallow water, you might pee. With this, all you have to do is spray. Oops, I just sprayed my phone. Two sprays under the tongue. I don't even have to get up. I just reach over into my uh, side pocket where I keep my eye mask and my earplugs and my mouth tape and my bite guard. Yeah, I'm 60 or going to be 60. I keep all that crap there. I reach for it if I'm having problems with going back to sleep. Spray two sprays under my tongue, put it back, 
and I do my breathing exercise, four, seven, eight. So the idea is that if I can't go to sleep or I'm awakened by something I can't get to sleep, I'll use this. And I think it does work pretty well in addition to the mindful practice and all the other things I just mentioned. I have fallen out of grace with that because I've found something new. The data that I've followed as of recently is using L-theanine. This is Now Foods products. I love Now Foods. I don't have any kickback or any monetary uh, reimbursement from Now Foods, but you guys know that uh, those of you who follow me know I've done live feeds with uh, Fruitful Yield. In fact, I have one coming in October. I'm going to be talking about getting ready for influenza and viruses in winter. So check it out. Uh, I'll post it uh, and I'll probably do a video beforehand just to give my subscribers a little bit of taste of what we're going to talk about. But L-theanine is a great building block for melatonin. So to get to melatonin, usually you'll need L-theanine, which is an amino acid. Now, the beauty of L-theanine, though, is that <clears throat> you don't get down regulation like I was thinking some people get with melatonin. And the other two benefits of L-theanine, number one, it's been shown to decrease anxiety. Number two, it helps with sleep. Number three, you actually lower LDL, and I'll put a link to the, the, the unboxing I did, one small paper said that you can actually lower LDL with L-theanine. I mean, those are all great. Oh, and blood pressure too. So L-theanine is great, 100 to 200 milligrams at night and no downside. So uh, again, sometimes some people are, that are super sensitive, they say that they take melatonin, they might get a headache or get sleepy in the morning. Uh, I'd say that's probably leaky gut. Um, uh, progesterone, I don't see a downside, but if you do take the progesterone pill at high dose, it can affect, it'll help you with hot flashes, but it can affect breast tissue well, sometimes. Yeah, again, so. it's not like taking Ambien or, a, or Benadryl, but over the course of time, if your ritual is regimented and then you take L-theanine every night, it should accelerate your success as far as getting to sleep. Uh, and uh, you can take it for a long time. Uh, I usually will use it when I'm trying to reset my circadian rhythm. So I just came back from Colorado. I had to reset everything because my sleep cycle was off uh, and I was sleeping at high altitude. Um, but since I've reset it, I don't really have to go back to my go-tos. So another thing that I will always embrace is magnesium. Now, I take magnesium potassium aspartate, but it's not available. Now Foods, what's up? Magnesium potassium aspartate by Now Foods is my favorite. However, since it's not around, I'm using this, and it just so happens that MagMind works great if you're going to use magnesium for muscle cramps, palpitations, anxiety. MagMind happens to be a magnesium brand that gets into or crosses the blood-brain barrier because of the amino acid it's connected with. So magnesium is a mineral, but you need to chemically bond it to an amino acid. This one is L-threonate, or threonate. Now, uh, magnesium l 3 supposedly was created to cross the blood-brain barrier a lot easier. So this crosses barriers faster. If you have palpitations, muscle cramps, anxiousness, I'd suggest magnesium all around. I don't like oxide. I don't like citrate. I think they're a waste of money. Don't even bother unless you're just using it for constipation. Like Calm, the powder, I think that's good for constipation, but not. I don't think it really gets in. I, meaning into the bloodstream. I think it just passes through the poop. And it's good if you're constipated, but if you're trying to offset uh, muscle cramps, palpitations, constipation, and anxiety, and maybe sleep, I think you need a higher brand. And the better it's made, the higher the price. So magnesium potassium aspartate, magnesium glycinate, magnesium malate, or magnesium l 3 and And this one happens to help with sleep. So the, the dosing on L-threonate is a little bit different, though. Somehow they came up with this is equal to 2,000 milligrams L-threonate. I would just tell you, if you're going to take MagMind, plan on taking two to three of these either at dinner or at nighttime. Again, if you're going to take it right before you sleep, you're going to have to deal with that water somehow. So if you're one that it usually wakes up to pee, I'd probably do it earlier on in the evening. It'll still help you, but say dinner time. So uh, magnesium is a great mineral that I think a lot of people are missing, especially if you're stressed out. Magnesium gets pulled out in times of fight or flight to prepare muscle to contract. That's what magnesium does. It, it helps muscle. But if you don't get into that fight or flight situation, fight, flight, or freeze, then the magnesium is just 
gone. So it gets taken out of bone where it's a reservoir and it gets either pooped out or not put back in. Now that's where this comes in handy because if you're constantly on stress and you don't replete the magnesium that gets pulled out of the bone, then you're going to be asking for osteopenia sooner or later, thin bone, or just low magnesium levels. None of my colleagues check. If they do check magnesium, it's going to be regular magnesium. That a serum magnesium is useless because it checks how much magnesium is in the bloodstream. You need to check how much magnesium is in the cell because that's what's giving you the cramp or the anxiety or the constipation. So that's why you have to check RBC magnesium. I mean, it doesn't really check muscle. Ma you can't check muscle magnesium. It's impossible, but you can check RBC magnesium, which is a nice way to check intracellular magnesium. That'll give you a rough estimate on how much is actually in the cell. So it's a very elusive number, but I like my numbers in the high sixes to sevens, as long as there's no kidney damage. And that's why I just try to push as much magnesium as possible. Honestly, you'll know you're taking too much magnesium because you'll have diarrhea. So unless you're taking crappy magnesium, don't take crappy magnesium. Last but not least, I thought I'd save this for last because I think this is the most potent, short of a prescription, my faves. Now I'm gonna start with the usuals. If, if you're uh, going to any dispensary, this is indica. This is, I used to use this. So gummies, they're okay, but you got sugar in gummies. And uh, I think I still have some, but these things are probably hard as heck. No, they're all sugar too. In fact, I don't know if you could see that. That thing is coated with powdered sugar. I'm not taking that at night. It used to work. And theoretically, indica subspecies for medical cannabis is supposed to make you calm. Indica, indicouch. Sativa, which is the other big subspecies, is supposed to wake you up. But nowadays, there's so many hybrids that indicas can make you awake. Sativas can make you sleepy. Hybrids can make you both. I'd really be careful if I were you. I wouldn't just go with, I'm going to take Indica because I want to go to sleep. You, you, you have to know the cultivator. You have to know how they prep it. In fact, a lot of the other products that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, they'll take moldy crops or bad crops. They'll boil them down, essentially, process them down to just the components of THC, CBD, and other cannabinoids. Everybody knows THC and CBD. Nobody knows THCA, CBN, CBG. So there's other cannabinoids, 144 different ones, and they all have different properties. Uh, everybody knows THC gets you high. CBD helps with inflammation and immunity, right? Nobody really knows CBN makes you sleepy. CBG also makes you sleepy, but it's hard to find CBG. And honestly, uh, these are two of the CBN products that were out there, I was very underwhelmed with this. This is a patch you can put on. I didn't get anything out of it. Maybe I didn't use a big enough patch, but it was way too expensive, it was like 16 bucks for this. And then this is a capsule that was made by Remedy, CBN too. Uh, pretty cool the way they make this. They essentially ferment or they leave a big bunch of cannabis around and they let it age. And then they take it and make it CBN because essentially when you age it, you lose all the high part and you just wind up with a contracted amount and that's CBN. And CBN works great to make people sleepy, but I had no effect. I opened this already, but this is how the patch looks. So the patch is just sticky. You take one patch, you, you take the adhesive off and you put it on. I think a lot of people try to cut this in quarters and make them last, but the quarter didn't work. I, maybe if I put the whole patch on, it'll work, but I'm just using this for props. Uh, I was not impressed. So if you're super sensitive or if you're older, maybe you'll go with one of those CBNs, but I can't even find them anymore. So the dispensaries are really lacking. So what I have found a lot of uh, older women like for some reason is chocolate. I did do a video on chocolate before. There's 10 pieces that come in a box, in a bag. And <clears throat> just for starters, what I would do if I was going to use this, and I think I talked about this in my other video, is... I would um, use a quarter of a bar every night under the tongue. The cool thing about the chocolate is that it tastes good. It's sugar though. And remember, sugar tastes good, but it turns on an insulin response. So that's the bag. This is a bar. Uh, you're probably thinking a big bar of like Hershey's Kisses or Hershey's chocolate, but this is a bar. And I'll just open one of these up. 
but I would do a quarter of this, especially if you're a neophyte, if you're a beginner. I just do one quarter and put it under the tongue, let it melt while you're doing your four, seven, eight breath exercise. You're reading your book, you're listening to your audio book. No video, no TV, no phones at night. If you're gonna watch this, you just listen to it. Don't watch it, just listen to it. Put it under your pillow, listen to it. I don't want you stimulating your eyes. Again, the eyes will turn on and you're gonna shut down your melatonin. So this is how a bar looks. Ah, uh, you can actually cut it in half, but you'd have to cut the halves into halves to make a quarter. So I'm not gonna take one um, since I'm doing my fave after this. And that's all you have to do. One quarter under the tongue of this tiny little bar and every night, and if you get one package of, I think this is like 20 bucks, get one package, it'll last you 40 nights. That should be enough to reset your circadian rhythm. Hopefully you can, save the rest now uh would i do it for the entire month yes i would usually i'll tell my patients to do 21 days straight 21 days i believe is enough time 21 days 21 nights is enough time to set our circadian rhythm again i tell that to all my flight attendants and my pilots who come over from asia or europe and they're trying to reset their circadian rhythm and um, it usually works uh, i learned that from deepak chopra that uh, if you have a meditative practice uh, deploy it for about 21 days straight and it will become a ritual. The brain, when it gets used to a ritual, adapts things and it makes it a lot easier versus the brain, when you're doing something new, it pushes back and tells you, I don't like what you're doing because it's new. I don't feel like learning anything new. So it makes it harder to do it. So there's usually going to be an uphill battle. But if you just say, I'm going to do this for 21, don't fight me and just get it over with. Usually by the end of 21 days, if you like it, the brain says, I'm going to take that information. I'm going to make it a ritual. This is going to be easy. And it doesn't have to think. So it's kind of like it has a pre-designated map uh, with neurons that, have known, that know what to do. So you don't have to think anymore. So this is my fave at this point in time. I don't inhale anything anymore. I used to, but it's, it, inhale to me is too short. Edibles, unpredictable. Uh, topicals in Illinois suck unless you make them from mixture from my company. Um, this, is, uh, a, this is a nanoparticle liquid mocktail. So the only problem I've always found with this is opening it up at first. If it's like first thing in the morning, ah, you gotta break something. I don't know what that seal is, but it's broken. Anyway, this is squeeze and this is strawberry flavored. This is the cap, the reservoir. You just squeeze it and it fills up and then you dump it into your Pellegrino or your fizzy drink and that's your mocktail. And because of the nanoparticle, it's supposed to be absorbed very quickly. I'm gonna leave this up top because that's my go-to. It gets into the bloodstream, gets into the brain. And this is where I think help, this would probably help more so than any of the other products that I just talked about because um, magnesium helps to relax. L-theanine helps to initiate slow wave sleep. Melatonin helps to initiate slow wave sleep. Progesterone helps to relax. CBN kind of helps, uh, but all these things help. But the beauty of cannabis is that, especially with the THC part, if you do it properly, it acts, it can act as a dissociative. So when you have an event, um, let me think of one with me. Oh yeah. So growing up, uh, I remember a couple of times in my life when I was a kid, I was the only Asian, uh, in a public school and, uh, walking in, I, I was an army brat. So my dad, uh, was in the army in, um, Alabama. And of course, when, when you're going from school to school, um, or introduced mid-semester, you're the new guy and you're the Asian. Well, you get introduced to the entire school population at lunchtime. And if you're like the only Asian, that's eh, easy target for bullies. And I remember being bullied several times in front of the entire student body. And uh, so that stuck in my mind. And that's why I developed guns and martial arts. And I don't like taking shit from people. So, um, I, it's not like I fight back against shit, but I fight back with brain power and I just walk away 
but I make sure the other people have it in a different way, you know what I mean? The idea is that if you have a nugget or an event and it sits in here like a seed and it's hard to turn off the alarm system, even now at the age of 59, if I hear something that reminds me of those times of ridicule, it makes me think, oh, damn those guys. And it brings me back to that defensive mechanism back when I was a kid. So one way to fight that or disconnect the alarm from the event is something called dissociation. If you've heard of psilocybin, which is a mushroom, or ketamine, which is a medicine, ketamine therapy, um, or EMDR, uh, eye movement, dissociative reprocessing, uh, it's a way to disconnect or dissociate the event of before from the alarm system that keeps on making you paralyzed, fight or flight or freeze. Uh, so it's a nice way to disconnect and move away from that uh, reaction that you have. Well, it has to be done with therapy, psilocybin or ketamine and or EMDR. It has to be done with a therapist that knows this. But this is what cannabis can do too. Cannabis can disconnect or dissociate the amygdala from whatever you're thinking. Now, if you don't link it to therapy, it might not work, but at least if you're just trying to get to sleep and turn off the alarm, if the alarm is you lost your loved one in bed next to you and you can't sleep in bed anymore, well, understandable, that's going to be a traumatic event every time you go to sleep. So this might be a nice way to not necessarily forget that you the event, but just understand that the event was there, but disconnect it from being so painful. Uh, so that's why I think this is probably the most empowering, especially today's uh, politics going on and question marks that are going around with the government forcing things and the dis misinformation that uh, doctors uh, have to give their patients or the lack of information doctors are giving their patients or patients finding information on the internet that doesn't sound like it's straight. So there's a lot of question marks now and today's age is just so difficult to predict. Don't know where we're going. Mask, vaccine, no mask, no vaccine, ivermectin. Who knows? The travel, no travel. There's a Summerfest just recently. I don't get it. We're supposed to mask and Summerfest, but that, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so anyway, um, this is a nice way to at least get to sleep. And it is an, also a nice way to, and I have some therapists that actually allow the use of cannabis before therapy. Now you have to be driven to therapy or uh, if it's virtual, you have to time the therapy properly because if you take too much cannabis or THC, you'll be too stoned and you won't be able to work as the, with your therapist. But if you take just the right amount, then instead of turning on the stress response during the uh, reprocessing, you might be able to work with your therapist a lot better. And there are only a couple of therapists I know that will allow that, but uh, that's a great boon and, and it should be used more often. Uh, again, that's dissociative therapy. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section down below. And I will try to put all the links I've done. I, I think I've done all videos on separately on all these things, on boxings. But please feel free to message me if you are having problems with trying to figure out your way. I also am available for consults. Herbal 411, new patient consult, or a cannabis consult. If you need a cannabis card because you want to get a cheaper rate, less tax, and more product, come see me. The charge is only 100 bucks. Otherwise, I hope uh, you're doing well. Stay safe. I'll be coming up with more information, especially with regards to COVID and ivermectin and vaccines. So uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't. Otherwise, I'll see you on Facebook, Instagram, and I'll see you at the next video. Thank you.